Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I have a microphone. Yay! I didn't have a microphone earlier because all of them are currently on a, a drum kit that's in my studio. And I have I found one that um, I'm not using buried away somewhere, so now I'm using that. If my voice sounds weird, it's because it's the one that I'm not used to. And I have I have a, just a preset that I use for my uh, voice stuff. And hopefully, hopefully it'll do the job. So, all right. Today's bass is this. You may have seen the preview up on my SoundCloud of that sound, or up on my Facebook, if you follow my SoundCloud or follow my Facebook, which I think you should do. Uh, but there are some fun things going on with this bass. So um, this is an FM bass. Now, usually when I make a bass in Citrus, Citrus being my preferred FM synth, I usually try to find it. I try to at least to find a way to make it work in FM8 because usually the they're you know basically the same. However, this particular bass utilizes a whole bunch of stuff that you can only do in Citrus. I'm not even talking about the the ring modulation matrix, but this is this is almost entirely um, stuff to do with the oscillator window here, which is the uh, little additive engine inside um, inside Citrus that lets you engage a whole bunch like harmonics and stuff on the fly, which is nice, and it makes completely new and interesting waveforms. Now, early on in, in how I discovered FM synthesis, after watching tutorials and stuff and finally understanding it, um, I, I experimented making the Valley sound by uh, having the, the fundamental uh, frequency FM operator have also the high harmonic in, inside the oscillator window. And then, I, then later I moved on to having a separate high harmonic and a different operator entirely so that I could, I could FM that operator in secondary and have all kinds of cool stuff. If you follow my videos, you probably remember this. Remember this. But this time, what I decided to do was to um, experiment using just the uh, the internal oscillator window, then FMing that whole thing, just, uh, just chaining it with FM. And so as you can see, I have two automation clips going on, modulating the X and Y. Now what they're doing, the X is uh, going straight into operator one, which is the primary output operator, and is, is uh, modifying the... Uh, it, total input modulation of operator one, which at this point is just operator two. And then I have uh, Y mapped to the volume of operator five, which is a second, which is a secondary modulation going into operator two. Six is going into five, so that it's making this pretty complicated sound going into operator uh, two. And then three is also going into operator two, but it's very lightly. Like it's only up there by like 4% in there. And then our operator four is going straight out as a uh, sub reinforcement with the volume up on modifier six, uh, X here, so that because um, if if I had that off, you would lose bass whenever um, X was all the way up because the FM does that. And having the uh, external output like that keeps it keeps a steady sine sub reinforcement during the whole thing. Um, I also have uh, some compression going on, and this is what it sounds like without the effects. This is what it sounds like with the effects. We'll talk about what's going on there in a minute. Uh, but I want to talk about the secondary uh, modulation and why it's so squelchy. Because that's, that's what we're doing today. Making the squelchiest, the squelchiest FM. So, okay. If I turned off uh, 3 and 5. Now that's just the FM that's coming out of operator 2. Which at this point is only only modulator er, modulator X, modulator Y is, has no effect on anything right now. <laughs> That's what's up. If I try number three, <laughs> this this is what's happening here. So what what I'm doing here is I have a little bit of the uh, some higher harmonics, just a whole bunch of them, and it creates a little kind of scratchy kind of sound. And then um, I also am just messing with the phase of the primary. Uh, operator here. Now listen to what it sounds like when I mess with that. I'm just gonna. As you can see, that has a pretty profound effect on the sound. I also did a little bit of the phase going on in um, here. That's what this. That's what this bottom window is. This top window is uh, harmonic amplitude. And then down here is harmonic phase. As you can see, I have the higher harmonic just slightly out of phase with the main, the primary harmonic, which is slightly out of phase with the output oscillator. 
Now, operator five is similar, and so is six. Five and six have different phases, and, and six is operating is operating on five, and five is operating on two, and that just does all kinds of weirdness. Now, if I had if I had Y all the way off, like if I were to play. <laughs> That's the effect that the modulation of operator five has on operator two and six has on five, that kind of stuff. So w the reason why it's so squelchy has to do with the fact that, that five and six are both slightly off phase. And that's creating, um, that's creating an interesting effect for like the, the basic FM type. Now, when I, when I say basic FM type, what I mean is that uh, like something like you would do with massives modulator oscillator. Or in a sense that it will only it will only modulate um, like you can make it you can uh, you can change the pitch of the modulation, which if you've ever done that might make it kind of sound kind of bad. But in this case the pitch is the same, but the phase is off, which means that we have these these sharp moments going on at the end of each period, and while, and while the period connects with itself, obviously, so like it's a, it's a this waveform by itself still sounds smooth when it's interacting with the other waveforms, which are not in phase. And it moves the pitch around. It it makes a much more um, chaotic result, but because it's still in the same pitch, it's a smooth result. It's a smooth and it's in key. So that's what's up with that. Now up here, this is this is basically the equivalent of having two. This I mean, this is two high harmonics. Two high harmonics being engaged at once. Uh, if you wanted to do that in FMA, you would have to have two separate operators doing that, and then you'd have to move the phases around. I mean, you can change the phase of oscill of operators in FMA. That's not a big deal. But like this sort of thing, you'd have to have that many operators engaged and then routed. And you could probably you could technically do that. You know, if you use um, FMA's effects version you could probably do a very complex fm chain like with a whole bunch of separate and uh, external uh fm inside fma's effects versions hmm i actually never thought of that now that might actually be a sweet thing to try out so i will mess with that in the future but i will continue to tell you about what i'm doing here so um in addition to just the fm itself i have here a multi-band compressor engaged compressing the hell out of everything I also I am oh yeah I have a uh, unison unison engaged in the main window of uh, the citrus here very low values with a little bit of phase so it just creates just a little bit of a uh, stereo effect because I wanted it to be a little bit stereo effect I mentioned that because in the bands of Maximus, you can set the stereo separation for each of the bands. And the low band, I have it no stereo, so that the, the, the bass is always center and solid. And then I have a little bit, I have I have um, a little more towards no stereo and um, the mids and some stereo, like, like more spread on the highs, just for fun. Um, I have no I have no master compression going on except for the limiter. Uh, I, had, I had some going on for uh, testing purposes, but I wanted to just have it bare just for this channel. <laughs> Just to uh, not have so much confusion, and there's, there's a little bit of EQing going on. It's actually less than my, than usual, and this is a result of the fact that I had the compression engaged because normally um, the FM doesn't have a lot of uh, high frequency presence, and I want to have that, and so I mean the compression kind of solved that for me. So I only had to do a little bit of uh, tuning to make it sound good to me. So that's what's up with that. Um, All right. Anyway, so let's talk about automation. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm 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 automating the X and the Y separately. Now, the Y is the secondary uh, har uh, modulation. <laughs> which will have that kind of effect on things. And if you you can do interesting things if you make it follow like that, and you can also do more interesting things by making it contrary. <laughs> See, the, the squelchy disc, at least to me, doesn't really sound very good when it's always engaged. That just sounds very, you know, a little too sharp. It can sometimes be good if it's just a little bit engaged all the time. Like that. But if it's moving around, it makes the sound more interesting 
at least to my personal sensibilities. <laughs> Now you might be interested in what this automation is doing right here. It looks pretty interesting. And I did a lot of this in my track uh, force multiplier, which is kind of old at this point. But what, what's happening here is that I'm using a double curve uh, line at each of these points. And you can get this by right clicking, making a point, left, right clicking on the point, and then you have a whole bunch of options. And the uh, double curve is one of them. And if you click in the middle here, instead of, instead of making a concave and convex, you can do these sorts of things. And uh, that's creating that kind of like fast but solid automation. Whereas normally, like that automation with just the normal lines would sound like this. It's like versus. So if you ever wondered how to make that kind of sound, because I'm sure, I mean, that that's something that you probably are familiar with. And listening to like a, a kill the noise kind of thing or something by Zomboy. And that would be the automation type that accomplishes that in FL Studio. Uh, indeed. So I'm going to put this um, this particular preset up on uh, for you guys to download. And that should be helpful for you. Um, if you don't have Maximus, you can accomplish what's happening here, which is the basic multi bank compression by using the multi-band compressor which is like an older version of maximus and e even still if you don't feel like using this you can always do a three band frequency split and then put a limiter on each of the bands and that's basically the same thing or if you want to go even crazier you can make like, like i mentioned on my facebook if you follow my facebook that i tried doing um 13 band compressing just for the hell of it and i accomplished that by having 13 frequency splits in the mixer and a, and a limiter on each of them and then using that to do compression on all the bands and you could do that that's the thing you could do i suppose later i'll do a tutorial on how maximus works but um for now i believe i've covered everything that is useful for this sound if you have any questions let me know i'll try to answer them and as usual have a nice day <laughs> Yeah.